How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and Quasar Signs have a few new tubes on the block which are a follow-up to their popular rainbow fixtures. There are two new variants, the Rainbow 2 and Double Rainbow. Now, this is a pretty technical review and I'll be covering how the Rainbow 2's color engine deals with common issues regarding LED technology. So, if you need any further clarification on anything I talk about, you know where to find the comment section. One of the biggest improvements of the new rainbows are the separate RGB pixel groups. The previous rainbow tubes were single pixel configurations, meaning that you can only display one color at a time across the entire tube. With the four foot rainbow tubes, there are 24 separate pixel groups, which really bring the lighting effects to a whole new level. For comparison, a four foot Astero tube has 16 pixels, which means that the Quasar has effectively 50% more pixel groups, allowing for even more seamless color transitions. The double rainbow tubes continue this iteration with literally doubling the pixel count with 48 separate groups on the four foot version. You can really see the difference when using the lighting effects because they look so much more immersive. One of my favorites is Fire, which pairs really well with the two foot rainbow too. The tricky part with emulating Fire is that while it's technically a single source, the shadows are constantly moving since Fire is a plasma and doesn't have a fixed volume or shape. In terms of color fidelity and rendition, the Rainbow 2s have very tight tolerances at the preset CCTs. In my measurements, all the CCT readings were within 150 degrees and had remarkably consistent Delta UV measurements. Usually when testing CCT, the Delta UV becomes more and more inconsistent as you travel across the white light spectrum. These positive numbers tell me that the fixture leans slightly green, but that's because the light is accounting for the green that's naturally present in standard CIE illuminants, which also give us extremely accurate TM30 readings. Most of you know the typical plus or minus green adjustment on RGB lights, and another neat thing that these lights do is maintain your color temperature as you add or take away green. Some lighting manufacturers will just blindly add in the green diode, which is not accurate and will in turn start affecting your color temperature. And this is something that I constantly run into when I'm dialing in Delta UV on RGB fixtures. As I'm adjusting my plus or minus green, I'll constantly have to readjust my CCT because the color temperature has shifted. Now really quick, I wanna bring up the psychological concept of just noticeable difference, which is the threshold that someone would be able to notice 50% of the time. Meaning that if I gave you objects of different weights, what would be the minimum weight difference that you would be able to perceive half the time? Now, this is a tricky kind of concept to wrap your head around, but what Quasar Science has done is engineer each CCT increment to a single step that's just noticeably different, meaning that for every single increment, there's a 50% chance you will see the difference. So the question is, what does this mean and why? Well, perceptions of Kelvin are different depending on what end of the spectrum you're at. A perceivable change in warmer color temperatures could be 50 degrees Kelvin, while the same amount of perceptible change at cooler temperatures might be 200 degrees Kelvin, which is where the concept of just noticeable difference comes into play. Instead of communicating in degrees of Kelvin, which might sometimes be inconsistent, you can instead work with clicks, since each increment is an equal amount of perceptible change and should make the process a little bit more intuitive instead of being driven just by numbers. Another way you can apply this concept is through blending color temperatures with multiple fixtures. As we all know, there can be a multitude of color temperatures at any given location, so by using this method to dial in different color temperatures to multiple fixtures, you can achieve a more naturalistic blend across your source. If you had finer increments, chances are you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So just know that whenever you're adjusting your CCT on the new rainbows, these numbers aren't just random, they're supposed to be just noticeably different. All right, last thing regarding spectral fidelity. You can actually view the current spectral fingerprint of the light by pressing the power button while on the status screen. And this is actually pretty cool. I haven't seen this on any other fixture and it starts to get really interesting because you can actually detune the actual spectrum to match with other lights that you're using. For now, this slider is only controllable from a board, but Quasar Science is hoping to eventually add this as an adjustable parameter on the fixture. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to detune my light to a lower quality spectrum? When I first started getting into spectrometry a few years ago, I had a revelation that you're only as good as your worst light, meaning that you could have a fixture that produces a great full bodied spectrum, but if you're trying to match another light with a less than ideal spectrum, the difference will be pretty noticeable. And at the end of the day, it comes down to creative choice. Sometimes you want a light with a really crappy spectrum to reflect the gritty environment or to showcase a character's psychological state of being. The point is that it's just another tool that you can add to the tool belt to help tell your story. 
Another great improvement is its dimming capability, not only with intensity, but also with color. With the first gen rainbows, colors would often shift towards the low end of the light, but that's just an inherent problem with all LEDs because most fixtures, including the original rainbows, didn't have the processing data to mix light levels at such a low intensity and would effectively just turn off certain diodes across the range. The new Rainbow 2s are using a 12-bit platform this time around to provide a much more consistent dimming curve and can go down to 0.1% in the new low output mode. The lights behind me right now are actually set to low output mode, so they show up really well on camera. When enabled in the menu, low output mode shifts your maximum output down by two stops, and you can almost think of this as dynamic range with your camera. Imagine you're setting your camera to a lower exposure index, effectively shifting your dynamic range to prioritize shadows. In this case, what used to be 25% brightness is now 100% brightness, You're giving us much more granular control over how dim the fixture can get, which is great because the original rainbows were often too bright, even at 1% intensity. I know Quasar Science is working to make this switch a little bit more seamless, but it's still great having that level of control. A lot of times when I'm using tube lighting, I'm looking to add subtle accents within the frame, which is where the lower intensities really come in handy. Another really cool thing that these tubes do is normalize hues so that you're not capturing colors out of gamut. Typically with lighting effects, the fixture will just cycle through all the diodes at full blast, so certain colors may clip while others look totally fine. This usually happens when filming really intense colors and Quizar Science is solving this by analyzing the strength of each diode and lowering the individual intensities so that they all match and this works automatically under the hood so that you don't have to turn on a specific setting. Another huge improvement is the mounting system that Quasar Science is calling the Osseum mounting system, which is essentially a long NATO rail that runs along the back of the fixture. The MyWay plates found on the previous rainbows were decent, but the new Osseum system is way more versatile. For starters, you can mount a baby pin directly to the fixture using the quarter inch mounting holes along the rail, or attach that baby pin to a sliding clamp for easy positioning and to quickly detach. You can also use the same method for these really cool rotator blocks, which are basically mini grip heads and have the standard 5 8 or 3 8 receivers. These are really great options because they keep the fixture super tidy and low profile to the rod, and you can angle it whichever way you want. Finally, one of my favorite mounting methods are the Osseum magnets. They're fitted with quarter inch threads, and these rubberized magnets are super strong. You can just about always find a metal surface to attach these things to, and it saves you the headache of setting up extra stands or rigging to a surface. The new rainbows bring back the traditional RJ45 ports for direct connections like DMX, SACN, and Artnet, but new wireless options are available with CRMX, WDMX, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. Now, I'll be honest here, I usually leave a lot of the wireless lingo for my gaffer to figure out, so I can't really offer much else on connectivity, just that it's there. These zoom tubes have the option to be powered off a battery with a 4-pin limo and Osseum battery plate. And also, I don't use view mount batteries, so I wasn't able to actually demo this feature, but it is nice having the option to power these tubes if you ever need a mobile solution. There are a few smaller ergonomic improvements as well, including a new blackout button, which suspends the light so you can adjust settings without being blinded and prevent toggling through a dozen different colors on set while you're changing settings. There are also a few shortcuts that make using the light easier, and a complete list can be found on Quasar Science's website. I don't really have many criticisms for this light other than the rubber boots on the end. They do a great job with protecting the ends of the unit, but sliding accessories onto the rail gets a little bit difficult because that space becomes really tight. They also black out the buttons, which ironically makes it really difficult finding the blackout button when I'm reaching for the fixture. It would be really cool if this were highlighted in some kind of way for easy visibility when I'm staring directly into the light. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. I know we talked a lot about color fidelity and the science behind the color engine, but that's kind of the point of the light. It's really cool understanding the inner workings of the color engine and the things Quasar Science is doing to elevate the standard of color. And the key point is that all this happens without you even thinking about it. Quasar Science seems to be really focused on making the user experience more seamless and intuitive. That way you can focus on what's really important, which is the storytelling. I know this video is pretty technical and sometimes esoteric, but I recently spoke with Tim Kang from Quasar Science and he explains it perfectly. I want to be esoteric because I think it pushes the craft forward. You need new tools that are fundamental to do something interesting, I think. It's not, so it's not just some gimmick, it's something that you understand the medium that you're working with and now you know how to 
precisely manipulated to what you want. If you have any questions on this video, obviously feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.